Okay, welcome back. We're going to have another episode of What is this clarinet? And we're going to get right to it, try and identify someone's clarinet that's sent in saying, what is this? So we're going to identify it by looking at particular key work and other things on it to help you understand more what to look for in the future when you see an instrument that you think it's something else. Okay, we'll get right to it. The first thing I want to mention is they attempted to take good pictures, but as you see here, they're dark. And you look at the two shadows on them, you see your know, lights that come in from the side here, but you don't have good lighting on top of it. So we can't really see what the emblem is at the very top of this. They email me saying, is this an R13 or which buffet is it? And we're going to get to that in more detail as you get to see things more accurately. I'm going to hit the autocorrect button up here and that really didn't help. I'm going to go to brightness and contrast. See if we increase the brightness a bit. But what we see here is we're going to crop this real quickly. That's what I went through earlier. And we see it's a buffet cramped and clarinet. But a little bit of oddball here. We see it has R13 light throat keys, the pillars for them, four, four pillars for two keys. We see a barrel, slotted barrel for the trill keys. But if, if you look at the slotted barrel really, really easily, it's one straight shaft. It doesn't have a um, ferrule around the bottom of it where it's, it's wider on the bottom of it. And also notice the emblem. The emblem is kind of high compared to a regular R13. So I'm all Mac when I see this, like I see those identifiers. You may think it's an R13, but it's slightly off. Let's go to other pictures. We see the emblem up close. You think it would be an R13. You know, it has the Buffet Crampton emblems all over the place. So this is interesting here. If you look at the sliver key, notice it's straight. A lot of professional clarinets, these will come down and they'll bend down. This allows you to adjust it up and down versus sanding the cork or adding new cork. Also, sometimes the key here also is the same thing. The arm is long and it goes along the post between the rod between the posts. This allows you to adjust a little bit better. And look closely at the tone holes. See these light reflecting off of it? This makes me think. Let me uh, try to increase the brightness. I mean, the middle one and the last one really look like they're plastic. You see that it's had full cork on it. Cork that key, cork sliver key. Let's go to the next picture. You know, Buffet Crampin. You know, when you look at these pictures, the only thing you really identify is that, yes, it's a clarinet. Now, this one is, now this picture is interesting. 409 puts this about, what, 1995 or 2005, serial number for R13s. But if you look just underneath it right here, on the lower joint, it says made in. This is a little bit more clear. Made in West Germany, or W Germany for West Germany. <laughs> I believe um, unification of Germany happened in like 1990, 91, something like that. I don't remember. So this was actually made in West Germany. And um, this clearly identifies this as a Schreiber. And if you think of those plastic tone holes I mentioned, the shininess of it, this is an e, probably an E11, but the emblem on the upper joint wasn't really there. It's like someone polished it off. People will think of a lot, a lot of E11s had that foil label on it, which wore off, but the earlier E11s were stamped and the earlier E11 was also stamped. So if we go on, you can look, if we look closely now at the upper emblem, you can see there's something there just above the arrow. And that would be our E11 stamp. Now, I have pictures of an earlier E11. I used to own one, one of the early ones myself, a long time ago. 
and even though these pictures are kind of bad, we can look down here, you can see the E11 clearly stamped there. You can also see how high the Buffet Crampton emblem is up near the top trill key. You can also see the slotted trill key guide is just one round rod and not a rod, rod with it like a base on it, a barrel base on it. So you can see that their clarinet is not an R13, it is actually an E11. And this problem can also happen with E13s also. Someone could actually, like say, sand the E13 off, and then you'll have a hard time. It's like, is this an R13 or, or not? And the emblem being higher tells you there was a model number there, which is no longer there. And then the slotted barrel, you have to be really accurate on what type of slotted barrel it is for the trill key guide. So going back to this picture again, we can see on the upper joint also, the top tone hole in this one, they're very reflective, which also identifies plastic. So these are plastic chimneys on the upper and the lower joint. And you can see that this is the lower ring key. It clearly looks plastic in this picture. So we know this is really an E11. We also saw the West Germany identifier made in West Germany. So we know it's made by Schreiber. And the trill key guide, it's slotted, it's a barrel, but it lacks the um, little platform, like I said, at the base of it. So this is clearly an E11 to me. They thought it was an R13. Um, many people think they have a clarinet with nothing on it. They, oh, it must be an R13 because it looks like a clarinet. In this case, it clearly is not an R13. So I hope I gave you some identifiers of what to look for in R13. One other thing I should mention as we look back at the pictures of the lower joint, the last picture I showed, and the last key, the spring on that is not cut into, there's usually a channel in R13 of the body because the key works a little bit lower and the spring is actually in this little channel and that's not present on this instrument either. So when you look and see these identifiers, you really have to know the little intricate details of it but this is clearly an E11 made by Schreiber for Buffet. Because remember, Buffet only at one time made their professional horns mostly, and they outsourced their intermediate and student line to mostly Malern in the earlier days, um, pre-80s, something like that. I don't remember. And um, after that to Schreiber. So you got to really be careful about what you're looking at. Anyways, any questions, comments, put them down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you later.